<laughs> I'm going to start that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Guess what I hadn't done. Go on, guess. Oh dear. What a plank. It's working now. Can you tell me it's working? No, it wasn't even plugged in. <laughs> so I've been doing this for what? 10 minutes going. And you guys couldn't even tell. Uh. Oh well. I will start again. I will start again. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, start again. I'll cut all that out. I'll cut all that out when I put it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've done that, but I was muted the other time, wasn't I? I was actually muted. This one, I hadn't even plugged it in. Oh, such a plank. Right. Oh, let's start again, shall we? Ugh. Right. <laughs> <coughs> oh dear. Right. Take two. Right. Since the last time I did this, right, I'm starting again, eh? Since the last, I'll be. Pr I'm practiced now. I've my rehearsal. Since the last time we've done this, the stream, um, I have changed the library. I've added some new functions. And the reason I did this was to make the library a little easier. God, I've got a squeaky chair. Make the library um, a little easier for the novice noob to uh, use. And so, Quite a lot of the functions that um, are static things, I have added some more functions to to make it easier. Hello. So, as you can see, it's got an M against it because I was messing around with it after the last stream, but I didn't commit it to Gil. So, if we look at the changes, so ignore that because I just put a comment in. What I've done is I've created functions that actually say what they're doing. So we've got a function here that says enable sprite. And so all we're doing is passing in the, the sprite number. I've got a function to disable the sprite, where you just pass in the sprite number. We've got a function, where's the next green bit? There it is. We've got a function to set multicolored we have a function to set it back to standard color if you've changed it to multicolor and we have a sub function that puts the sprite in front of the text and a function to set the sprite sprite behind the text and last but not least oh no 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 second to last we have the the um, expanding function so we've got sprite small, small sprite large x Sprite large Y and Sprite large. Now, I did originally call this Sprite fat and Sprite tall, but I thought that was not PC. So I've just made them say what they are. And then the last is the colors. So I've got a function that does every color. So Sprite color black, Sprite color white, and so on and so forth and so on. Sprite color orange, light red, gray light blue and light gray so it allows the oh oh 
Hello. So that's what I've done since the uh, the last stream. So I've tried to make it a little bit easier, and I've I've actually implemented it in the example. So this is version six. So as you can see, I mean, if you by the way the live share is open, it's I put the link in Discord. Um, you can see that I've now specified this is sprite zero, enable it. Sprite one, enable it, and so on. And then we set the multicolor mode. Set the multicolor mode. We tell that this saying this one is sprite behind because by default it's sprite on uh, in front. Sprite large. So we set the sprite to be large. That's large in both directions. And then we can set the colors. And all you're doing is just telling it what the sprite number is. So. We should be able to run this, and I've got to remember which key it is because I've changed. It's F6, I think. Oh, and it's moved over here. Right, there we go. So, we're still working. It's just Quasi's now behind the text. So, what this stream is all about and we are 20 minutes into it <laughs> forget the first 10 minutes i wasn't talking i was just lip reading um what we're going to try and do in this one is we're going to try oh squeaky chair we're going to try and implement the animation the animation part of it where we tell where we tell the system what we need to do so We've got, currently, let me run it again. Ah, wrong key, wrong key, wrong key. Urgh. That's because I've been playing with CBM today. F6. So, we've got two sprites in two different animation modes, right? So we've got Esmeralda who's just sitting there waving the socks off but not moving so therefore this sprite is being animated constantly no matter what <laughs> and so we need to be able to cater for that mode but quasi is not being animated until he moves or till is being changed so what we need to do is we need to um, have two different states of animation one state is where we tell it animate no matter what and another one is to tell it to animate when I've been changed or yeah and typically it's the change of position or something like that so that's what we need to do we need to be able to specify those two different modes yeah so the first one which is the easier one i think is we're going to try and set up the animation um for when you know it's constantly animating and there's there's a lot of stuff we need to do just to get to that point so I'm hoping I'll have it done by in this stream. Hoping, um, but it's 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 a case of trying, just trying to think it through how we're going to do it. Now I've got my uh, I got my notes. I put a picture on Discord of my th my notes of thought process. So we need to add more data points to our sprite array because. We need to handle more information about um, the animation. And I think the only way we can do this is to get on with it. Stop talking, John, and get on with it. So let's go. So that's six. Let's make a copy of that. And we'll make this 
We'll make this V7, which will have all the animation stuff in it. So we're only going to be working in V7, so we can shut down V6. Keep constants and our library open. Right, so here we have got our matrix uh, sprite array. So we need to, now I'm just going to put some labels in because I'm, so I'm still unsure about what I'm going to do. But, hello Gray. Um, we need to, right, so what we need to do, we need, we need a flag to say, is the sprite actually animated? Yes or no? Because if it's not animated, we don't want to we don't want to waste CPU time trying to animate something that's not animated. We need to we need to know where our frames are. Um, we need to if we are being animated, we need to know what our current frame is. Um, what is the speed of the frame? So how fast does the frame change? Um, our speed frame counter so if we say that it changes every 100 cycles then we need a counter to count up to 100 and stuff and so we can then move on to the next frame um, is it a continuous animation so does it just loop round again and again and again um, how many frames are in that sprite um, there's a few more we'll, we'll 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 identify them when we get there right so so any um, active so let's do that hmm should I make another namespace or just or just leave it as it is because we're in the sprite lib one. I wonder if it will allow me to have two namespaces. Oh, it looks like it. Okay, right, so we'll copy this and we'll paste it in here. So our first one is, are we active? Our next one is, we need some way of um, Put in the frames. I can't put this. Put in the frames. The way the way Derek Morris did it in his is it assumed that you had your sprite frames in sequence. Yeah. So all everything was in sequence. Now I know from experience on Neptune Lander that sometimes you go back and you think, oh, I could have done that. And so then it's a bit more of a pain to. Um, change the sequence but just thinking about it we could keep it as the sequence I suppose because if we're going to be using sprite pad we can move the sprites around a lot easier we can order them a lot quicker and a lot easier hmm Yeah, I suppose we could do it that way. See, I was going to have a table with all the frames in. Um, but we're still having two bytes because we'd have to start do the start frame and end frame. Nah, nah, we'll go back with my original 
original notes that I've got here. Right, so what I had was that we would be looking for frame tables, yeah? So frame table low. <laughs> Mr. Amazon's here. Get him, boys. Get him, boys. Get him. Get him. Yep, Mr. Amazon's here, and he's delivered my brand new Raspberry Pi case. Well, I should say it's not a case; it's a it's a rack. It's a um, it's like a server rack for Raspberry Pi. I'm going to put them all in one. Have a little server rack in the corner. I'll do a video on it because it's really really cool. Ah, where am I? Oh yeah. So frame table high. So this is going to point to a table where we have probably as well. Because I bought that with it as well. Because um, I've I've got some <laughs> I got some I got more I've got I've got more I've got more SSD memory than I can shake a stick at. Because I've already got one of those. Got one of those, which is a 240. One terabyte. Um I've got another terabyte over there. Um, I've got a 500. I've got two one terabytes in the laptop. Yeah, I got more memory than the planet, I think. Pity it doesn't work for the brain. Right, so what I was, right, for the, these two, what I was thinking was we'd have a table. And in that table would specify the frames in the sequence that you want that frames to be those frames to be set. Um, the reason I'm going down this route is because it makes it easy because you can modify tables. Yeah, then they don't have to modify the um, the um, sprites itself. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, what else do we need? Oh yeah, we need a current frame. Current frame index, and that will specify within the frame table. Um, let me try and explain. What I want to do is, I want to be, I want to have where you can say quasi left. Yeah. And then, so that's the, the location, and, and then we do dot byte, and we put in the frames for Quasi. Which I have got to remember where I put him. Where did I put him? Oh, this is going to be interesting. Where? Oh, there he is. Oh, good job. Um, now I gotta remember where I put my program. Do, 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 do. Sprite pad, innit? That's the fella. Is it that one? Yeah, it's that one. So as you can see, we got sprite numbers, yeah? So sprite, whatever not that is. And what I wanted to do was that for, for, for him going, what have I said was first? Going left. So that's this way, yeah? So going left, what I wanted to be able to do was say that going left is, let's call that, what's that? 13, 4, 5, 
yeah, four, five, six, seven. Is put in here, so it'd be four, five, six, seven. So they're the frame numbers, yeah. So we do quasi multicolor, and then we'd have another frame table quasi high res left dot byte. I think it was 12, 13. 14, 15. So it would allow you to create um, your frame table, what, what frames you want to run through without having to worry about here. You know, at, here we've got them all clumped together in sequence. And with, I mean, Derek Morris's um, way he did it, he, he assumed that all the sprites were going to be in sequence. And No, 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 no. It's just the low byte and the high byte of the reference table. It's just the low byte and the high byte of that label when we come to it. Yeah, it's just a pointer to where this where this data is. So that's what I'm trying to, because I think it's far easier to modify a table, and if you've got your sprites all dotted all over the place, and you don't and you know, you, then you don't have to worry about reconstituting all your sprites. All you have to do is just modify the table to go to a different frame number. So, so back to the this one, which is the current frame index. That would say, right, we're on this frame, then we're on this frame, then we're on this frame, then we're on this frame. So it's not actually the index of the frame number, it's the index in your frame table that defines the frame number you want to animate. Then we we'll have a, a delay. So this is this is the delay that we're going to wait before we move to the next frame. Speed. So this is the number we'll be testing the delay against. Yeah, yeah, got it the right way around. <laughs> um, whether we are looping. Now this is where we, whether we are looping the animation. So is it just gonna be a one time th through where we, like uh, for Neptune Lander, the explosion was a one-time thing. So it went, <laughs> did the explosion, went little, stopped. Um, looping means it would have carried on going round and round and round and round forever. So that's that's uh, another thing, uh, another thing we've got to set. So to whether the animation is going to be going on constantly. And then the important thing is how many frames are in our table. So let's get all this lined up. Do me head in. And the number of frames is basically how many frames are in our frame table. So we could have 10, 20, in this case four, um, and that will be determined when, how, when we loop back round and also if we're not looping when the, the animation's finished. Um, oh, there's some others, but I can't remember. I'll remember when, we, when we're doing it. So we'll leave them there because I'm probably going to use them anyway. So now we've got our animation um, array in what we need to do then is we need to just we need to do um, two things we need to be able to st set the animation so set it up and we need to 
um, update the animation. So we need to do the set first, don't we? Because we need to understand what we want. And I think the only way we're going to be able to do this is by macro because there's an awful lot of information because let's just take the basics, right? So we need to know the that it's active. We need to know the high and the low of the the frame table and we need to know the speed. So that's four bits of information. Oh, five because it's looping. So that's five bits of it. So that's five bits of information. Yeah. And <laughs> Yeah. Um I couldn't find I, I mate, I, I nearly called the functions fat and tall, mate, I tell you. Um So what we need to do is in the update we need to we need to um perform the animation update in the update. But we also need to have a macro to be able to set the animation. So I think we need to do the macro first. Now, this is going to be interesting. Hmm. I forgot how to do a macro. It's dot macro, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, I like that. Oh. Thank you, VSO, for letting me letting me know what it is. Right, so um, set animation and so we need to know that it's active table low uh, frame table low. Let's do it right. Frame table high speed and looping. What am I missing? Oh, I'm missing something. My voice in the back of my head's going mental. Oh, six bits of information. Right number. Yes. Yes. That's that's the beauty of this, right? Is that um, as before we use mathematics to work out our animation. In this method, will mean that you can have your animation different aspects of animation could be a different number of frames and and that's the beauty of this in oh hang on hang on uh, da, 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 da. it is now hello hello there we go okay cool right i'm here <laughs> Hello, I'm here. <laughs> right, so we need to set the animation. So, um, so this is going to be a macro because it's far. I think the most feedback. Yeah, just switch the Discord sound off, mate, and just um, speak when you want to. It'll, it'll come back delayed though. Um, right, so we'll make this a macro. So we're going to uh, set this. Now, let's do that so I can see what my names were on my array. Here we go. So LDY hash sprite number. No, sprite number. Come on, stop it. Right, okay, so let's do 
Let's do the active. So LDA hash active. Store it in animation. Hopefully this will work. Dot active comma y. Okay. Let you off that one. So we'll do that for everything. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Frame table low. Frame table high. Speed. No. Speed. And looping. We need to initialize our delay counter. Oh, number of frames. Put that there. So that that should set up the sprite, set up the animation. Because all we need to do is as long as we as long as we initialize the delay. Oh current frame index as well. We need to do that as well. Uh, current Is it not picking it up? Oh, it is. Current frame index. So that resets the frame index. Right. So that's uh, setting the animation. And then we need to, so as soon as you set the animation, the animation starts, yeah? And it will only start when we go into the update function of our sprite management thing. So we need to create another go sub to to two 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 two. two let me think. Yes. So um yeah because we're do we're doing um constant animation at the moment so update animation well let's follow what what we've done already apply animation so let's uh go above the macro so apply I mean uh, animation so this so what are we taking in here what we're we taking in here so y equals sprite number I don't think we need anything else No. So the first thing we need to do is we need to load animation dot. Come on, you gonna do it? You gonna do it? No. Okay. Oh, yeah, I decided. Okay. Come on, why? Branch if. Branch if, branch if, how are we going to do it? Branch if, the branch is probably going to be too far. So branch if not equal to um, animate sprite 
forward and then jump to skip uh, animation. So skip animation OTS. Okay, let's bring that back one. So now we're going to animate the sprite. So we've tested whether it's active. If it's not active, it's not even going to bother. Said something else then. In my eyes testing. So what we need to do now is now we've tested it's it's active, we need to we need to work our way through. Now let me get my notes up. So we need to um now I had it in a different order, but I was thinking about this last last night. Yeah. What we need to do now is um, when, so you've got to remember that this is going to be running through 60 times a second effectively, yeah? And so for every frame, for every frame. So what we want to do now is we're, we're the, we don't want to be changing the animation frame every cycle because it'd be just stupid. So we need to then um, download, um, apply the delay to the frame so the way we can do it oh, just trying to think now I'm trying to think try and not overthink it yeah Okay. Do we change the frame first or change the frame last? Sorry. Let's just change the frame. We'll optimize it later. We'll optimize it later. So if we load X with the animation dot current frame I think it is current frame index I bet it's not gonna let me do that is it is it gonna let me do that yeah it should do I don't know. I don't know. Hang on. Where's my book? Let me see. LDX. Anybody? Yeah, I know. That's what I want to find out. So LDX comma Y, come on, be in there. Yes, 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 yes. It's LDY comma X you can't do. Yes, 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 yes. Bring it on. 
<laughs> yes, mate. I thought it was awesome last night watching what you was doing. Right. So we're loading the current frame so we can then get that frame. No, we can't. No, we can't. Oh, poo. <laughs> no, we can't. Right. I need to... Well, let's put it in anyway. So, LDA. Uh, da, 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 da. Frame table. Oh, what was mine? Beef is shallums. What was mine? I forgot what mine was. Boob is uh, Andy. That can be mine. Oh, no. That's it. Come white. So that's loading the frame. But we need to set self mod code. Here we come. So LDA uh, animation dot frame table low come white store it in frame table and do it again. Plus one. That's it. Yeah, I know yours is boob, mate. I'll, I'll stick with ass. Um, we're not going to be looping round, so I don't need to put a bookmark there. Right, so we've got the frame now. So let's store it in. Store it in the sprite. And that's wrong, it's that. So that's now changed the frame. So that's now changed the frame. So. We need now to now activate the um, deactivate the delay counter. So where's my macro? So I've just remembered something. We need to make the delay the same as the speed when you set it. That's it. That's it. Right, so now we can then do DEC um, animation dot delay comma white. That's if that's allowed. Ooh. Well, I'll be gutted if that's not allowed. I thought it would be. Something in my brain saying it's not. Oh, you are joking me. What an utter, utter, utter. Why? Why not? <sighs> Brr, plank. Right. Got to do this a different way. What we're going to do, what we're going to do. No, I know. <sighs> I 
Oh, that is just such a crock of. What an absolute crock of. Okay. We'll have to do it the old fashioned way. Oh, come on. So we decrease from the um, the animation delay now. What are we doing now? Hmm. What have I got here? See, I've got the wrong registers here. I knew they were wrong. Yeah, let's click on it. There we go, it's open. Right, hang on. So I want to, I'm just wondering if I should swap over the X and Y. I know LDY comma X isn't right, isn't on, is it? Oh, it is. I think we could. Ooh, that's going to really screw up that. But it doesn't matter because we're at the loop. That's really going to screw with that, isn't it? Yeah, sod it. Let's do the usual. Stop it. <laughs> X Y A. Right. So I don't need to worry about the states of this now. But we could, we could use X instead of Y. Okay, let's do that. So transfer Y into A, transfer A into X. So now our sprite number is in X.
So we're doing X for the sprites. So load X, load X, load X, load X. There. That becomes Y. And load Y. So here we can now go back to DEC animation dot delay comma X. Okay. So branch if not equal to where am I going? Where did I say I was gonna go? Yeah. Yeah. So if we are so we're decreasing delay if we're not equal to zero that means we don't need to do anything so we just need to skip the animation but if we are equal to zero then we need to reset the delay counter so let's reset the delay counter So let's reset that. When we've done that, we now need to um, increase the frame frame counter, current frame index. So increase animation dot current frame index comma x. So that's going to increase our frame index. Then we need to load it in. We need to load it in. Compare it with uh, animation dot number of frames. Come on, X. Just make sure that's allowed. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to. Yeah. So it's reached the end of the frame. So we want to include. So we're going to be talking zero. So if we say four, say that it's got four frames. So it's zero, one, two, three. So this will increase it to make it four. So it's branch of carry, carry set. is above yeah above and we need to then test Yeah, so we need to do BCC, so it's less than. So if it becomes four, that's greater than. And then we just need it to skip because it hasn't hit the end of the app animation. So skip animation. But if it has got to four, then we need to test whether we're looping. Yes, we need to test whether we're looping. So animation dot looping comma X. Oh, little X, come on. Um, and 
if that is equal to zero, yes, if that's equal to zero, we want to go to stop animating. But if it's not equal to zero, so we, that means we've hit the last frame, but it is not equal to zero, so it's a looping one, so we need to reset the frame counter back. So we need to reset the current frame counter back. So LDA zero. Store it in animation dot current. Come on, come on. Yeah. Comma X. So that resets the animation. So that resets the animation. That's what I got in my notes, isn't it? Resets the animation. Then we skip. Yeah. Then we skip. Skip. Jump to skip animation. And then here we have this. And basically, we are storing the animation dot active, comma x. So we deactivate in the animation. Um, question is, do we turn it off? When the animation's finished, do we do we turn the Do you think I should turn the animation, turn the sprite off when the animation's, or just leave it on the last frame? We'll leave it on the last frame. We can turn it off if we need to. Because the user can turn it off. But then, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. Should we turn the anima turn the sprite off when it's finished animating? No. We'll leave it as is. So we store it in the active. That means everything is done. Oh, this is not going to work first time. I guarantee it. So we're going to set as we're going to set Esmeralda. Yeah. Because she's the one that's constantly being animated. So let's go into. Let's get rid of that. Let's go into Sprite 7. Let's set up Esmeralda's animations. So. Right, MC is multicolor. Yeah. And HR is high res. So we've got two animation tables. Because remember, two sprites, two animation tables. So if we go into here, so we're doing Esmeralda first. So she is pointing that way. Okay. No, I'm just overthinking it. No. So we are placing so Esmeralda so we're starting at 170 so our base base number is 170 so that's 170 171 2 3 4 blah 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 yeah so we've got Esmeralda looking right at 206 that's that one there so that's 206 so that's the multicolor one so right okay dot byte 
is 206, 207, 208, 209. So they're the four sprites. 206, 207, 208, 209. And the high res ones are 8, I think. More. 206 plus 8. Two fourteen. So that's her. That's her frame loop. That's her frame table. So there's four in each. I should do it. I mean, we could do an, another thing. Oh, I wonder if this is allowed. Is that allowed? Oh, good, looks like it. This is what I learnt from Grey Defender in his last video. That's about right, isn't it? Is that right, or do I have to put square brackets around it? Oh, dot label in it. So I'll do the same for this as well. Oh, that's HR, that's HR. Got them the wrong way around. Multicolor. Multicolor. Right then. So we should be able to set her animation. So we need to set it, we'll set it here. So, um, how do you do a macro? How do you execute a macro? It's like a sub, isn't it? Just type the name, okay. And I forgot what I called it. Set animation. Oh. Okay. Right then. Let's see what if we No, 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 no. Do it that way. So sprite number, so the sprite number for Esmeralda first one is Two and so it's two and three, okay. So sprite number is two. Uh, yes, we're active. Frame table low. Frame table low. Will this work like that? So we're doing the multicolored one first. I think that's. No, multicolored is three, and we're starting with two, so it's not multicolored. Okay, so that's the high res one. That's 
high. Da, 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 what else we want? Number of frames. Well, we know that. What else? Speed. Ah, this is the one. Now, if we go, let's just move this out of the way a little bit. So if we find where her, her animation is, so here we go, update Esmeralda. So we're calculating sprite frame for Esmeralda. That's there. So we are saying, so it was dividing by eight. So was we counting up to 32 on the frame counter? Yes, we was counting up to 32. So we're saying that for every eight frames, we need to change Esmeralda. We need to change her frame. So odd speed is the number of frames between one frame and the next. So the speed for Esmeralda would be eight or should be eight and we want it looping so we just put a one in there right it's gonna be interesting why are you like that oh it doesn't like that do we have to put a dot in front of it or something Oh, is it that stupid space? Hang on. No. <clears throat> Come on, guys. How do I execute a macro? Okay, macro set color. Why is that not like liking it? Let's see if it builds. See whatever we get. Yeah. It's in the namespace. Why is it not? because I've put that there no <sighs> thanks why is it saying it's a syntax error do we have to put a dot in front of the macro name Oh, hang on. What? Come on guys, help me out here. What am I doing wrong? So why is this not liking? 
it's in the it's in the namespace have I just done the macro wrong are they okay What's it complained about now? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I always thought I thought you just put you just put parameters in it. Where's macros? Where's the contents? John, try taking the space out before the uh, bracket. Well, this one in between set animation. Yeah, that one. Yeah, it still is not. It's still not liking it, mate. All right, let's find out. Come on. Macros. Oh, are you joking me? Oh, this is such a pain at the backside. I don't think it likes spaces. I knew there's some problem with the spaces. I can't believe it was. Right, there's right to execute macro. There's no space, like you said. But if I put a space in there, am I still got spaces? Yeah. And I've got spaces in the. Um, Oh, come on. <laughs> Fall over on a macro. There we go. So why is it not seeing it? Yeah, that's what that lib sprite was. But it just doesn't like the... Um, that. I'll tell you what. I'll take it out of the namespace and put it on its own like that. Would you believe it? Right. So I want to shift F6 because I want to see if it. Uh, 
All right, so now it's complaining on this. Doesn't like that. Oh, that's because it needs this putting in. should do that sort that out F6 does it compile no have I called that wrong number of frames oh and ah. uh, where am I 838 Oh my god, is that working? I've just, I think I've got the wrong <laughs> sprite number in, in the wrong bit. Right, there's confusion going on here. Um, let's rem out Esmeralda's update routine. Yeah, I think so too. But let me just, um, because we still had the old Esmeralda um, update routine in, which is here. So we're just going to rem that out. So that's now stopping updating Esmeralda. So, come on. We think we've got the sprite the wrong way around. Yes. Well, the high res sprite's the wrong way around. And um, it's the only one we're setting. It's the only one we're setting. So, I've got, I must have this set here. Well, if that's 170, 178, 186, 194, 202, 202, that's 202, then that's 210, 214. Yeah, I know that we haven't set the multicolored one yet, it's just the high res one. But it looks like I've got the wrong sets on here. Right, let's work this out. So, the high res one is 214. So, we're, so the first one is 44, and we start at 170. Oh, John, get your brain going. That's 214. The trusty calculator out. It's two fourteen. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Let's turn off her multicolored one. So her multicolored one is number three. So that's this one. So let's just not run the multicolored one. Yes, she's the wrong way round. Okay, Let, I, I I don't like it. I don't like it because I'm sure we're at one seventy. 
Yeah. Right. Left. That's pointing left, isn't it? 202. Two oh two plus eight. No. Nope. Let's go back to our update routine. Left, left base. That's what we want. Left base is two oh two plus eight. Is two ten. What? Is it? Okay. I must have loaded the wrong file. Oh my god, so it is. Right, let's do the multicolored one. Let's settle the multicolored one. So we'll we'll enable it here. So let's set up the multicolored one. So we'll run the macro again. So this is sprite three. MC 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 same attributes okay F6 come on let's have some animation <laughs> I forgot I changed the table didn't I <laughs> Where is she? 202. Here we go. There we go. So that is now no longer that is no longer calculating the frame based on a frame counter. What this is saying, what we're saying now is, for every eighth fra for every for every eighth frame. So that's that speed thing. For every eighth frame, we change the frame. Then we count another eight. Then change the frame. Then we count another eight. The beauty of this method it means that you can have as many frames in a sprite as you want. You know. You know, like like on the jumping one, I think it's six six frames. It won't matter because when we tell it, it'll just run through those six frames. So, yeah, it's um, it allow it allows you to um, to have different um, frame sets, frame animation sets. Yeah, sure. The reason I'm using the macro is because I cannot put that many parameters using the registers. It's either we load them and store them in a temporary set and then run a routine to take it from the temporary set to load it in the make the array or we use a macro which then builds it like this so this let's find where it is so there that's the colors right so there's the animation tables so it's somewhere around here here we go So it's here, look. So this is the first set. So it's loading sprite number two. So it's basically just crates. Where's sprite number three? Current frame. Frame, here we go. So that's the first macro. <laughs> um, that's the first macro. So it, basically we're storing directly into the array and that's what the macro is for. 
we are taking these values and using the macro to store them directly in the frame, directly into the frame, in, into the array, the, the animation array. Because there's, like I say, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bits of information. And I can't see um, a way of just doing a JSR. Uh, and so, yeah. Right, let's see if we can do quasi. Now, quasi is a different animal. Ha! <laughs> no pun intended. Um, because he's not animated all the time, yeah? So if we animate quasi now, he'll be running on the spot. But that's what we're going to do for the moment. We're going to get him running on the spot. Um, and then we need to work out how we're going to stop him animating when he's stopped and animate him when he's moving so when he like now he, he animates when he moves yeah but when he stops he stops so the animation is working in a different way here it's still looping around the animation because um, you know if he stopped he would stop running but we need to uh, be able to, we need to test, we need to add another parameter to the array to specify whether it's a continuous animation or a on-demand animation. And what I mean by on-demand is that if you change the X and Y, so the sprite is modified, then we can, we can run through. It is looping, but it's not looping constantly it only the animation only runs when we move quasi as with esmeralda she's running all the time so it's so esmeralda has a um an infinite no oh, it's not it's not the right word what's the word yeah quasi has on demand um animation as esmeralda doesn't her animation is constantly going yeah so what we need to do is we need to create another, and this is what I was thinking about today at dinner time, when I should have been working, but I wasn't, I was doing this. And what we need to do is in here, we need to put a flag to say whether it's an on-demand um, um, sprite or a constant animated sprite. Yeah, no problem. Have fun, mate. I'll talk to you later. So, um, so we'll, what's the better? What's the better test? On demand or uh, constant? Um, see you later, dude. What's the better word? On on demand or constant? If we're looping. Um on demand. Let's say that. Why do you not see that? Right, so we need another parameter in our in our macro. And we need to specify here. called it isn't it yeah so we're spec we're now setting whether it's on demand or not yeah so if it's zero it's constant if it's one it's on demand yeah
so how are we going to do this it's in the update so how we're going to do this right so basically basically it's when we perform the animation Hmm. Okay. So we can do we can test that here. No, 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 no. That's up there, isn't it? Yeah, animation on demand. There. So we're loading in and if it's on demand so that's going to be branch if not equal to on demand animation so we'll bypass this and put it there So that's testing for whether it's an on-demand animation. If it is, we'll bypass it. So let's just make sure we haven't broken it just by doing that. So if we go in here and go to our set macro. So she is zero because we're saying it's not on demand, it's constant. Right, so that should still work, hopefully. Hopefully. Yep, right, we ain't broke it. Okay, we're on a winner. So in here now, and what I said was any sort of, if it's been modified, then that's on demand sprite animation. So we just basically do the same thing again. But we do it in here. So after everything's been applied, we do it in here. So on demand, but this time if it's equal, then it's constant animation. So basically, we don't want it running twice because this is always going to run, yeah. But what we don't what we don't want is we don't want the person is being um, um, being modified. We don't want the animation running twice just because it's like that. So we're testing if it's on demand. If it's equal to zero, that means it's a constant sprite. So we're going to bypass this because that's taken care of here. Because you've got to remember, not every sprite is going to run through this routine because we only run through this routine if it's been modified if it's not been modified it never runs through it that's why the um, constant animation is outside of this um, update loop so that that should do it so we need to just do Quasi. Now we're only going to do his left and right at the moment because jumping is going to a different animal altogether. So we'll just so this is update quasi. So we'll rem all this lot out because that's his update routine. So we need to now do this for quasi. So we'll copy those two and we'll put them up there. So this is.
and this is Esmeralda. So Quasi is zero and one. Oops, not the mic. So let's create Quasi's. Uh, might as well copy that lot. Stop it, Visual Studio. Copy that lot. So animate Quasi. And we're going left. Do that again for right. Right, so this is doing left and right. Oh, left is the one I'm missing. For the high res, oh, sorry, the multicolor. And we need to do the same with the high res. So update quasi right. Oh, no, left. Copy that. And then do the same here. So this is HR. Come on, stop it. Yeah, that's different, different, different story. We're just doing left and right at the moment. Let's just see if we can get them going left and right. Right, left, that should be it. So we've got the two tables, now we've just got to put the no right numbers in. So quasi going right, right quasi, so it's multicolored first, isn't it? Multicolored first then high res, so one so multicolored going right is one seventy. One seven one, one seven two, seven three, one seven four, one seven five, one seven six, one seven seven. And then the high res is one seven eight onwards, so that's gonna be here. 178, 179, 180, 181, 182, 183, 184, 185. Okay, so let's set. So we're going to set Quasi's. Um, so we're going to point him right. We're pointing right. So first one's HR in it. Quasi right. 
multicolored, which is there and there, and then that. There and there, and then the length for right. So that's multicolor, and that one. So Quas is going to have the same animation system as Esmeralda because we're only talking four frames. So we're going to use eight. So. So that's set out right. What do I need to? What do I need to check? So it's basically update quasi, isn't it? Aha! Here. Right. Okay. Let's see what damage we've done. Well, he's running. <laughs> uh, well, he's running. At least we got the animation working. Partial, yeah, partial. Right, did I forget to change the flag? Yes. Okay. F5. Oh! Not F5. F6. Right then. He's <laughs> moonwalking. He's moonwalking. <laughs> right then do you know why go on have a guess why is he moonwalking yep exactly so we need to define the animation for left and right so we've defined it here as the default for him to start up, yeah? So he's always pointing right. But here, where we add, where we rend out the two lots, we need to redefine the, um, redefine the animation. So, um, we need, we need, uh, I mean, we'll do it, but I know it's going to fail, right? We'll do it, but I know it's going to fail. So we'll copy this because this is already set up. So this needs to go into his, where he's going right. So going right, that's here. So that needs to go in there. And then going left needs to go in there. So we just change left. But it will fail. Can you guess why it will fail? No takers before I run it? So why is it going to fail? Watch. Here we go. I am pressing 
right. Now I'm pressing left. Pressing right. Left. Well, at least he's swapping, but it failed. And the reason it failed is because we're constantly... No, 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 no. Because we're, con we're constantly setting up the animation. And what do we do when we set up the animation? We reset the frame counter back to zero. So it's always going to... So what we need to do is we need to create another... In the, in the game, uh, sorry, in the example here, we need to create another variable. So we've got this quasi direction here, yeah? We need to create another variable called, can you guess? It's quasi's previous direction. Because we need to test which direction he was before. Because if he was in the opposite direction, then we need to reestab we need to reset the animation. But if he's in the same direction as he was before, we don't redefine it. So we need to test quasi's previous direction. So when we go down to his update system here, here we go. So we've got quasi's direction is right. Yeah. So here, branch of minus, we're going left. So this is right. Yeah. So if we LDA quasi's previous direction, yeah, we should be able to say um, if it's minus, that means it was left before, yeah? So we need to branch if plus we need to so the previous right it's trying trying to trying to explain his current let's say his current to direction to be in this routine now means it's a positive number so if the previous direction is a positive number we need to bypass it so we'll put a thing in it bypass animation setup and put that well in fact we don't need to because there is a label already there which is this yeah so we'll just bypass it and just carry on and so we do the same thing on the left so the left means it is it's minus so we copy this and on here we basically say branch if minus because that means it must have been left before to go to here do you, do you understand do you, is, does that make sense Make sense, anybody? No? Right, so hopefully if we run this, no errors, which is good. Right, here we go. We are going right. We are now going left. Oh! Right, do you know what I did wrong? No? Anybody? I forgot to set the previous. Right, so because if it runs through the animation that means it's changed so we need to reset it so if we buy if, if we bypass that means it's the same so we don't need to keep setting the previous if it's the same only set the previous when it's when it's changed right let's do it again <laughs> good dear <laughs> all right we're going right and he's running now we're going left and he's running yay 
There you go. So, you no longer have to worry about frame counters, um, mathematics, anything like that, because now you're defining it. You're saying here, after eight frames, you want to change. You want to make it change a frame. Yeah. So, if you want him to run slower, yeah, just boost it. 16 oh we'll just do the right I'll just do the right so if you want him to run slower just boost it 16 so if we run this now here we go so he's, he's running slower now the delay is cut the current so it counts from 16 downwards so every frame would go 16 15 14 13 12 yeah, until it gets to zero. But I've got a sneaky suspicion it's not working. I've got a sneaky suspicion it's not working. Let's really slow it down. I think I've done something wrong in the the um, test. Yeah, that's the same as before. That's the same. Oh. Oh, it's doing it now. Oh, John. John. Right, 16. 16. I forgot one, didn't I? Because I defaulted him up here. Here. Oops. So if we make that 16... 16 that means he must he'll start running slower right here we go that's better so he's, he's left is the normal one but the right we slowed him down conversely we could speed his legs up so looking like a wily coyote so we could say only four frames and we'll do that here as well So now his legs should go rockets. Yay! As that's what he was before. Now his legs speed up, look. So now you don't have to worry about maths. You don't have to worry about working out every t when you want to change it. You just tell it, I want to change change the animation frame every fourth um uh, every fourth frame yeah every fourth run so the bigger the number the slower the animation is the slower the number the faster the animation is so that's his normal so what we set to eight this is set to four yeah so we could set it to two where his legs are really going for it yeah delay is the current um yeah a de delay is the delay before you move to the next frame and speed is the reset value for the delay yeah oh, don't know if i'm explaining it right maybe i've picked the wrong words i don't know maybe any suggestions let me know so i quite like him running that quick I quite like him running that quick. Hang on, let's change him up, change him everywhere. Four, four. Yeah. Oh, did I not change it? Get rid of that, it's confusing me. Right, that's 4-4. Four, four. Well, have I changed the wrong one? Oh, I changed, cha no? Changed Esmeralda, didn't I? 
Right. Four, eight. This is the one. F6. Right. So, left. Right. Look at him. Little legs going like the clappers. And she's going for it. So now you don't have to worry about the animation. All you have to do is worry about what the settings are. Yeah? So, you know. So basically it's the last three numbers. Yeah? Speed, looping and on demand. So how, how, how many frames go past before you move to the next frame? Is it going to be constantly looping? And whether it's animation on demand or constant animation. So they're the two. Now, oh, jump in. Oh, this is a trust. Uh, trust Gray to bring that up. Now, I think jumping, we could get away with constant animation that just loops the once so it's it's not going to be looping all the time I think we could get away with that I mean what happens now I know we're going to screw the animation up but uh, Let's try it. So what happens now? So when he runs, yeah. So he goes up and then he comes back down. But if I let go, that's that's the thing. Yeah, that's that's the the, the thing. It's going to have to be a constant animation because he's going up and then he comes back down. Right. Right. So we have to. Um, So it's basically the same thing. So it looks like I'm doing it every six frames. Yeah, so I'm doing it every six frames. So we got uh, one, Two, three, four, five, five frames in the jump. Is that right? Is that right? Five frames in the jump. One, two, three, four. I think this is an old one. What we got in this jump cycle? Let's have a look. One, two, oh, we got four. Okay. But we, we, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right, so we have twelve iterations of four sprites. Yeah. So we can do the same thing. We can set up the same thing, yeah. We've already got the animation. We've already got the animation tables already there. So let's just finish this off then.
that must be multicolour. Yeah, that's multicolour. So, um, let see. So... Do copy. So this is the multicolor, and then we'll have to work out the high res. Right, so that's the multicolor, and let's work out the high res now. Right. So, okay. Right, the high res ones were eight. Let's just make sure where's his code? Where's the jump code? I think it was eight. left right here we go jump so we are loading the right adding eight right so it's eight so we need to add eight so right h So 186 plus 8 is 204. No, it ain't. 194. What am I thinking? Wow, John. So 194. 194. 194. 195. 5. 195. 197 right so this is um, 8 8 8 9 9 9 200 200 201 201 201 Right, that's set up the matrix matrix scissors matrix scissors Just need to import incorpor incorporate it now in the jump routine So we're loading jumping and we are jumping forward to here. And the reason we're jumping forward because it's applying Are we in jump? No. Here we go. Load jumping go forward. Yeah. So go forward to here. Load jumping go forward to here. 
So we've got another routine then that does the jumping. Here we go. Jump cycle. So basically it's here. So we're testing the direction here. Branch if minus. So this is where we need to set up the um, the animation. Yeah, that's where we need to set up the animation and test. So we'll do that. So we'll load the previous, basically copy that. That's left. That's here. So we're going, so we're not doing this at all. So they load, load it in, perform the set and then we return out, okay. I think that needs to be remmed out. So when we branch minus, we return out because we don't need to set the animation because we're currently running through it. Right. Let's set that up. So that was left. Jump animation left. I hope this works, I hope this works. So we're saying it's not for its six, every sixth frame it's doing it and it's on demand. No, it's constant, we said it was gonna be constant, but it's not gonna be looped. We only want it to do it once. So that's left. So we need to do the same for right. Which is here. So this would be branch if plus. Branch if minus to here, because there's branch if plus to here. Or are, or are we? Are we? Are we? Are we? Before we was loading the animation and then jump into there. So that that'll go there as well. All right then. So this is right.
Do, 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 do. Okay. Let's just make sure this works. We're not we're not bothered about the jump index anymore. So that can be rimmed out. So but are we? Are we bothered about the jump index? No. Because we worked that out here. Okay. Well, that's coming to here. Yeah. End jump. So we need to come here. So that's doing the end jump. Which should re-establish the animation for the running. This should work. Loading the direction. Going here if it's left. It should work. There's only one fine out. F6. Oh. Right, okay. We need to change that because it's going too far. That must be up here somewhere, is it? it? Must be this here, right? So we'll change that to jump to end jump plus, and this will be not equal and call that jump. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hopefully that has fixed that. Let's see. F6. Come on. Oh. see if that sorts that out I think that was because there's no okay so it is the distance it is the distance right okay uh, dunk put it back so it's def this is the distance one then is it Call that a proper one. Right. Okay, run a winner. Right then. So we ain't bust that. Here we go. Jump. <laughs> Oh, 
idea. Right, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That text is getting in my way. I want to see. I want to see. Because, oh, I've pressed F5. It looked like he was doing, what was it, the long jump, you know. <laughs> Legs going bonkers as he jumped over. <laughs> Hang on, let's see. I think that's what's happening. I think the um, the jump animation's been overwritten. Right, so that's what he's doing. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Jump animation's been overwritten. So, we need to, on, when we're testing for left and right here, right, so is jumping go forward to here? Jumping go forward to here. So, Oh, hang on. Is his animation over being overrun? Hmm. Oh, you are joking me. Yeah, took out the old jump code. Um... It's here. Oh no, that's not jumping. Here, this this is the old jump code here. Right, F6. Let's slow it down. How do we slow down? Yeah, because that's 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 guiding the Y, the jump. So that's still there. How do I slow the emulator down, guys? Oh, here, here, aha! Right, slow it down. So let's just jump. Have I got the wrong? Have I got the wrong numbers? Have I got the wrong numbers? Jump animation, jump animation. So I'm pointing to the right place. So have I got my numbers wrong? Jump animation. Compared to the... Uh... No, it can't be right. Because 193... you are P 
plank. Right, let's just work this, let's just logically work through this. The problem is here. Right? We're pointing right. We're already pointing right. So the previous direction is pointing right. So it's skipping this. That's what's happening, it's skipping that. Uh, okay. Hmm. So where's our jump test? We could use the jump, we could use this jumping flag. Yeah, we could use the jumping flag. Because we set it to one when it starts. Yeah, we we'll use the jumping. We we'll use the jump cycle flag. Okay, so basically, what we're going to do at the moment, the jump cycle flag, which is this here, is saying zero equals not jumping, and one equals jumping. So what we can do is we can we can use this flag. So we need to change the way it operates, but we don't need to change too much. Basically what we need to do is we need to say that one or two is jumping, yeah, where one is start of jump. And two is the rest. Do you under do you guys understand what I'm trying to get across here? So what we do <laughs> no <laughs> Right. Let's uh, see if I see if the words are wrong. Initialize jump process jump. Execute jump. There we go. Execute. So one is initialize the jump and then two is execute. Do you understand it now? Does that sound better? So, so what we need to do now is all the tests where we're testing for one, we need to change because we're gonna be greater than one. So here we go, so jumping, compare branch if not equal. Well, this is not equal, so that means 
um, it's going to be zero because we it's either zero or one or which well it's zero or one at the moment so we're going to have to say branch of carry clear yeah less than one well in fact branch of equal if we're low if we load jumping if it's zero I want it to not not go through the jump cycle yeah we can do that get rid of that branch if equal so if it loading jumping it's zero it's equal it goes to the keyboard test if it's not equal that means any other value then we'll go through the jump cycle right so this is our jump test so we're setting it to one which is right that's initialize setting it to one so now we're going to the jump cycle so jumping compare with one now it's not branch of equal it's branch of carry set e if it's equal or greater than um, there as well okay so it still works still works still works going to here still works right now it's here so we don't don't want to test we don't want to test um, jumping we don't want to test the previous yeah so compare with one oh compare with one stop it and then if it's equal to one, because we're saying set up, go to set animation. So we're setting the animation straight away. So we'll do that here as well. So we'll do that here, because that needs the same thing. Because if we're going left, So there, set animation is there. That doesn't like it, why? Oh, because there's not a colon on it. So, when it's set the animation, we can then do LDA hash to store it in jumping so we've completed the animation and we'll do the same here so now it's in execute so it should never ever do that again so it comes through it's set to one for the first time branch if equal it comes here sets the animation up sets the direction to be right the same and sets it to two so when it comes to two it's not equal to two so it comes to here that should do it two four two three four forty now we still need them we still need to test that when it's executing it's in the same direction yeah Right, I'm going to have a drink before. Uh... Okay, right, here we go. Oh, all our branches are okay. Now, are we still in low mode? Yes, we are. Right, okay. Jump. Come on. Yay! He's pointing the wrong way, but yay! Right, let's put him back to super fast mode. I missed it. No, no, I hit it. 
Right, so he's running. Jump. Right, okay. So we need to understand why he's defaulting to going left when he stood still. When the previous is going right. So we need to sort that out. Let's see if we can run and jump at the same time. So he's going left when we're going right. And he's going left when we're going right. Up, left, right. Okay, have I got the tables wrong? Right, so we're doing that. So I'm not bothered about that. Right, okay, here. It was got. It was pointing left, wasn't he? So it's it's running this. It's going to here. Hmm. Um, I'll, oh, well, I would think so. The thing that's, the thing that's made me think, right, let me run it again. The thing that's made me think that something's wrong with the logic is the fact that right so now we've we've gone right yeah so our previous value should be right in fact let's run it in the debugger let's have a look so we are looking for ot 2 ad and o2 a7 yeah so they're the two values so shift f6 let's look for those values Right, so we are, is there just a memory view? No, okay, O2, here we go, O2, A7, so the 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's there. So it's currently set to nothing because he's not moving, and D, F, That's here. So if we go right, oh, oh, now it's doing it. So as you can see, it's it's changing, yeah. So if we jump, so the previous is one. Right, let's do FF. Yeah, there's got to be something wrong there. What's the pointers it's pointing to? Right, B2. Right, that's the... Right, jump. C6, 7, 8, 9. C6, 7, 8, and 9. Where's the arrays? Where's the arrays? So we're looking for 
frame tables well we're looking for the current sprite aren't we C9 C6, 7, 8 and 9 so C C6 brain's gone One nine eight. That's left. So it's picking out left all the time. So I think there's something wrong with the logic. Just got to have a look. Just got to walk it through. So it, I think it's this. Branch to left animation. Then we test for jumping. Is it the first one? If it's not. But it's always going to left animation. Let's put a break point on here. Let's put a break point. It's dot break, yeah? That's the word. See what's happening. We're about to find out, mate. Right, jump. So this is starting the jump animation, yeah? So we are loading O two A seven, which is the direction, the current direction. So this should be 02A7, 02A7 7 should be, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm, that may be the problem, because it's set to zero. No, because it's, it's gone through. So it's going through the right, now we're looking for this, which it's one, so AA, two AA. So it's right, F, E, D, yes, there. So that's one. So it's jumped past the previous test. So we're loading. This is all the right stuff. This is the right stuff. Hang on. Is it? Um... Aha. Oh, that's a shame. Doesn't tell. Doesn't tell me um, what I went in with it. That's a shame. Right, okay, so we are in right. So we are definitely looking at right. So let's see what happens now. So we store it, put two in jumping. It should now be a two, so it shouldn't set. That's right, so it's looking at the previous direction. Oh, poo. Poo. Right, okay. We need to initialize those directions. 
Uh, uh, da, da, da. Let's do it down here where we're doing all this lot. So LDA hash one. Come on. Store it in um, quasi direction. And store it in quasi previous direction. Right, see if that sorts it out. Okay, jump. There we go. Right, let's see if we are on the mark this time. Branch if minus, we shouldn't branch minus. So we should now jump past here and set the, here we go. So it's going into the macro. Then it'll do the second macro, which is right. Then we're setting the directions. So the two directions should be the same. Well, we'll see if that's gonna happen in a minute. Set it to two. This should now go through, and this one is minus, which it's not. <sighs> Told you there's a logic issue. So the problem is. Problem is it set it up and then it jumped to here which is meant to maybe we should if we've set the animation why are we going through the left right we'll get it to jump away that's probably why that's there right we'll get it to jump we'll get it to do jump return Right, let's see, F6. Right, jump. Oh, I'll have to break point in. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Left the break point in. Right, jump. Run, oh, no, he's running, he's running. I thought his running weren't working then. Right, so point the other way, jump. Oh, look at that, that's a problem. When he's finished his jump, when he's finished his jump, So we store zero in jumping, so that's right. So we're back in this loop. Um, oh, I know what we can do. I know what we can do to force it. We'll clear out his previous direction. So it forces it to do it. Right, F6. Come on. So we're running. Jump. And then he runs again. Okay. Run a roll. Jump that way. Oh, still. Yeah, definitely. So close. Right, we need to see what that. We need to see what that um, variable's doing. Right, so it's Shift F six. 
so to previous is oh to a three four there three there we go so two a which is there so it's zero one two three four five six seven so we've set it so it's at one and it looks like that's the other one there so we'll jump and it's set to one and look it's pr the previous has been reset look there so if we now move right oh the previous has is not being set look it's set there but it's not been it's not been set on the first time through so we'll do that right we'll do that again we'll do it left as well jump so that's ff then it's set to zero so we do left again and it works okay so it's just the right right jump previous gets reset the current is still right then we go right right so it's not it's not setting the right animation update so it's not doing this it's not setting the right animation yeah um, we'll look at that in a bit I'm just trying to get it back on that we get it so it's coming through yeah and it's loading the direction the quasi direction which is right so it's plus jumping should be set to zero because it should it comes away is it the same is it the same jumping sprite does it actually go into the right so jump no that's the first fr so that's the first frame that's the first frame of um, it running hang on so I've stopped if I go left again Oh, it's just the right one that's doing it so it's this it's not setting it oh hang on Hang on, could it be to do with the animation? Because we, um... we turn off the we turn off the animation there. Okay, mate, not a problem. Take care. Because it's not a looping one. It's not a looping one. I think it's because it's not looping. Put a break point here. Put a break point here. I want to find out why it's not setting it. Because I think it's here where it's not setting it. Right. 
jump. So now if I move, it should go straight into that break point. There we go. Right, so what is it doing? Let's go into the other one. This one. Previous direction, branch shift plus. Oh. Oh, I see. So it didn't set it. It did not set it. It did not set it. So load A with the previous direction. So what's it loaded with? It loads zero, which is plus and we're setting it to zero. Right, what we need to do then is, when we clear out the jump, we need to do the opposite. So we load quasi direction, E, O, R with, 255 story so that will up that will invert it whatever it was it will invert it f6 jump ah, and the crowd goes wild There we go. And he still run, jumps and runs at the same time. Well, there you go. So we have a working sprite library that does animation and does everything else that you need to do to manipulate the sprites. Wow, that was a bit of a... God, just because of this, just because of that. So, we, for the, the Hunchback, uh, development we have got now a working sprite library that allows us to do animation both constant and on demand and the ability to affect the state of the sprite just by using some uh, library function so we don't have to worry about um yeah, what po what what uh, registered to poke and and to, uh, what bit to set? We have got now a library that will do it. Um, the animation I knew was going to be tricky, but we've got it now. We've nailed it. We've got it to work, and we've got it to work in all the situations that we need we needed. So, both on demand, static, and. Um, uh, not static, constant, and we st we still can use a static sprite. We can still put a sprite on there and just have it as one frame. Though we haven't we haven't got rid of that at all. That is still there. But now you can your animation is based on how many frames you want that 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 sprite frame to be on the screen before you change it to the next 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 frame. Not. As before, we was working. We had was we had a pro, we had a frame counter, and then working out the maths for it. So you know, dividing it by eight, divide by sixteen, and stuff like that. Now you don't need to worry about that. You just tell it, change my frame every six, change my sprite frame every six screen frame, 
And so the smaller the number, the faster the animation. The bigger the number, the slower the animation. So I hope you guys got something out of that. A bit of a, a long one today. Real long one. Is there any questions? No? Alright then, I will say, well that's it for this stream. I will get the code on GitHub in uh, in a bit. I'll get rid of the comment, the, the remmed out stuff, and I'll just add a few comments. And I'll see you in the next stream. Alright, take care guys. Have fun. I'd like to thank all the patrons that are contributing to my channel. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. Thank you very much.